Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. Um, I wanted to talk about um, a Jamaican man who has been dating or living with a British, I think she's a white British woman. He's 49, she's 56, for three years. Um, and what's happened now is that the Home Office do not believe that the relationship is genuine. So Karen McQueen, who is his woman, is dying of cancer. She's terminally ill. And what the Home Office is saying is that both he and she can go to Jamaica and she can get treatment over there. You know, it sounds like they're punishing her for being with a Jamaican, to me. But not only that, they put on his refusal letter that he does not pose a threat if he returns to Iraq. So what they've done is, you know they've got all these standard letters that they cut and paste from person to person, because not everybody gets an individual letter. They've cut and pasted the wrong letter and put it in his and even then, even though it's based on the wrong information, they're still planning to deport him. I tell you something, this home office is something else. The man has already been detained for months in a detention centre. And he's managed to get a lawyer who's going to take it to the Court of Appeal. But it is absolutely disgusting what people have to go through. I'll just read what I took out of the paper, The Guardian. I love The Guardian. It's really on top of things. This came out today, the 31st of October. So it's hot off of the press. And I think we just really need to know what's going on here. The bias and the prejudice and the, you know, and even when they make mistakes, they don't even want to admit to it. That's the problem. So anyway, a Jamaican man caring for his terminally ill partner has been told that he faces deportation from the UK to Jamaica because the Home Office concluded that he failed to demonstrate that his life would be at risk in Iraq. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that he's not from Iraq, he's from Jamaica. So that alone should render that letter null and void. And they had the audacity to backdate it. Fraud, fraud, that's fraud. They had the day of, they had the day of the letter, the 3rd of October. So, so apparently the solicitors are saying that they deliberately backdated it so he'd be out of the 14 days to appeal. But it's the postmark that betrayed them. The postmark said 27th of October. So no wonder they're so suspicious of everyone else because they're deceitful. They're the frauds. They're the ones that are doing things covertly. And because they are like that, they're projecting it, they're projecting their dishonesty on, in, on honest people, on applicants. Ooh. Anyway, O'Neill Walfall, 49, who has never been to Iraq, faces removal after he received a refusal letter appearing to indicate that his case was confused with someone else's. The government also said it would not be unreasonable or unduly harsh to expect his British partner, 56-year-old Karen McQueen, to relocate to Jamaica with him. I mean, she's terminally ill, for Christ's sake. Why would that not be unreasonable? McQueen has a diagnosis of terminal cancer and is waiting a transplant after kidney failure. In the letter rejecting Warfall's application, which his lawyers said provided clear evidence that the government copies and pastes letters and disregards individual submissions when reaching its conclusions. The Home Office says, you have claimed that you will be unlawfully killed on return to Iraq and you have not demonstrated that death is virtually certain. So this is what people from Iraq, this is what they've got to prove, that death is certain if they go back. 
I mean, this is probably privy information because ordinarily we wouldn't even have this information. But this is what they're asking them to do. And because they put the wrong words in the, in the wrong letter, that's why, that's why we know about it. Because of their mistake getting him confused with someone else, he faces the consequences. He ignored the letter because he felt it had nothing to do with him, when in fact he probably should have written back to explain that they had sent him someone else's information. Because what they're saying is that they didn't hear back from him and that's why um, they're deporting him. After being contacted by the Guardian, the Home Office said that it was now reconsidering its decision. Thank God. That's what I'm saying. Thank God for the Guardian. I actually donate to them every month because I tell you, that, that newspaper is on top of a lot of issues that affect a lot of people. Warfall has been in the UK since 2002 and has been in a relationship with McQueen for three years. She is dependent on him for support with her serious health conditions, the couple say. And the thing is, I bet you they're so bloody suspicious because she's so much older than him. He's 49, she's 57. I bet that's why they think it's, it, it's not real. I'll tell you something, man. In the letter, officials say they do not believe the couple's relationship is genuine because Mr. McNeil's name is not with McQueen's on the tenancy agreement. They're so full of it. How many people put the, uh, their partner's name on a tenancy agreement unless they've started out together and decided that this is what they're going to do? I mean, when you're, when you're putting someone's name on a tenancy agreement, like a mortgage agreement, it has some serious co co implications. So not everybody's going to run and put somebody's name on a tenancy agreement and God forbid something goes wrong or they're in debt or they don't pay and you're left with that, that the partner's part of um, whatever obligation they have. But what the um, Home Office is indirectly saying is that if you're a proper couple, you should be prepared to take on that risk. However, under the Home Office so-called hostile environment rules, those without the right to reside in the UK have no right to rent property. Now, does this mean he hasn't got any right to reside in the UK? If he hasn't got a right to reside in the UK, that's a different matter. But I guess he, he probably hasn't got a right because otherwise, why would they be deporting him? It's complicated because on the one hand, they did have like that Zambrano principle where if you if you had somebody who was born in the UK, you you were allowed to stay in the country, especially if they were dependent on you and they needed your care. And like in her position, she's terminally ill. So she is dependent on him. So they did have, they did have like, um, ah, I forget what you call it, but they, that was allowed at one point. I don't think the Zambrano principle, I don't think they're permitting it now. I think they stopped it. But the fact of the matter is, is that what they're saying is, is that he had no right to rent property because he's got no right to reside in the UK, which kind of, which kind of makes it kind of justified for them to say he's got to go back. Unless he can prove that he's genuinely in a genuine relationship. He should have married her really, because if that was the case, they definitely couldn't do anything about it and it would definitely have shown that they were in a serious relationship. The thing is with people in the UK they don't put no kudos on marriage, they really don't. In the British culture, well I shouldn't say the British culture, I should say the British black culture, you know, people take years to get married. Sometimes they're with, they're with the partner from their in their teens, early 20s, and then they wait till their 50s and 60s to get married. So I don't understand how that works. 
well, not the how it works. I know how it works, but I don't understand the logic behind it. Are they testing somebody for all those years? Is that what they're doing? Are they testing to make sure after 40 years you've been living with the person, whether she qualifies to be your wife? Is that what this thing is about? I really don't know. But anyway, in this particular situation, he should have married her, to be honest, if they're in a serious relationship and he knows he's uh, in a precarious situation because then they couldn't claim that it's disingenuous. But that's what they're claiming anyway. The officials say that they do not accept it would be unreasonable or unduly harsh to expect McQueen to re relocate to Jamaica with him. They say she can get medical treatment in Jamaica. The dread! Officials conclude that there are no compassionate factors in this case as the relationship is not a genuine one. Can you imagine? They have the audacity to claim that it's not genuine and put it in writing. How do you prove a relationship is genuine just because it's not on the tenancy agreement, just because a name isn't on a tenancy agreement? That's enough proof. But that's what they're saying, you know. You know when you're going for these applications, if you're claiming you have a partner, a live-in partner, and your name ain't on the tenancy agreement or on the mortgage documents or on the bills. So, you know, like sometimes, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but sometimes you don't want somebody to live with you because you don't want to have all that extra, you know, you have to pay extra council tax and all that kind of stuff. It has implications. It has financial implications. So a lot of people don't want that kind of commitment in that sense. Because that, that you, normally the partner isn't compensating for the loss. And so, you know, because that's what normally happens. You live with somebody, you, you're, you're worse off financially. Because there, there's not that balance. And, you know, they end up... So technically, that person should be on the um, telephone bills and on the electricity bills and on the all those kind of utility bills. They should have some in their name at that address. And that's what the Home Office is saying shows commitment, shows that you're in a serious relationship. If that's not there, then... Warfall said the Home Office should not made, have made the mistake of saying I'm from Iraq. How could they have considered my case properly if they wrote those things like that in the refusal letter? Well, they're just going to say it's human error, aren't they? But technically, they should, they should send out another letter that's correct. That's what they should be doing. I believe that my life will be at risk from gangs if I sent if I'm sent back to Jamaica. I'm not sure if that is. I understand what he's saying, but I'm not sure if they'll say if they'll believe that. To be honest, does that mean he came from a gang background and then he'd have to prove that he came from a gang background in order to justify why he's saying he could be murdered? My case should have been considered properly without cut and paste information about Iraq in it. The Home Office has treated me so unfairly. They've locked me up in a detention for many months. My mum died while I was locked up and I was taken to her funeral by Im immigration officers. He said he was angry that the Home Office had decided that his relationship with McQueen was not genuine. I would love the Home Office to move in here for two weeks to see how we cook together. We do everything together and share the same bed, he said. This is no fake relationship. I'm a clean church going man trying to live a good life. I have been through so much because of the Home Office. When people see me in the street, they say they're seeing a ghost. It's not even funny. McQueen said she was distraught about the Home Office's decision. O'Neill is a good man. He could contribute so much to our society if he was allowed to, she said. I can't believe the Home Office refused his case because they said he could not prove he would be in danger in Iraq. Going through all of this with O'Neill has made me feel as if I'm under the control of immigration myself.
O'Neill is a loving and caring and supportive partner. Being with him and having his help and support has given me a new lease of life despite my terminal illness. Warful solicitor Nega Candia of MTC Solicitors condemned the quality of the Home Office's refusal letter. He has lodged an appeal and also sent a pre-action letter before starting judicial review proceedings against the Home Office. Candia expressed concern that the Home Office backdated the refusal letter so that Candia would not be obliged, would not be able to lodge an appeal within the 14 day deadline. The date on the letter was the 3rd of October 2019, yet the date on the recorded delivery slip when it arrived at Candia's office was the 22nd of October. And thank God it went to the solicitor's office because, this thing is in my eye, because if it had gone to um, O'Neill's address, he might not have even noticed that the postmark was different because it's not something you're really going to look at. Other than saying that it was reconsidering its decision, the Home Office did not respond to questions from The Guardian about whether the refusal letter had been deliberately backdated, why references to Iraq were made, why they were not considered to be compassionate grounds in this case, and why the relationship was deemed fake because O'Neill's name was not on the tenancy agreement. Booyaka! Candia said, the Home Office regularly continues the abuse continues to abuse power and disregard client submission. There is a clear evidence to demonstrate caseworkers copy and paste decisions that are backdated and this suggests that they do not train staff properly, exhibit complete lack of quality assurance and waste hours of solicitors time and taxpayers money. So peeps, what can we learn from this? I think we need to learn that if you're in a couple, number one, you have to be seen to be a genuine couple. Your names have to be on the tenancy agreement. Sometimes that's difficult because to be on the tenancy agreement, you need to show all kinds of paperwork. And I think this is what, this is, this is all deliberate, by the way. It's all deliberate to catch people out. But anyway, that's the way the cookie crumbles today, folks. But I hope you found this information useful and helpful. Bye bye.